I have long watched the people of Earth, and I have witnessed their capacity for greatness. They know that in any draft, there are calms between storms. There are days when their league mates turn against them, but the day will never come when they forsake their fantasy draft and the quest for ultimate glory. Rankings, sleepers, breakouts, values, together at last, united within the ultimate draft kit. The ultimate draft kit stands ready, waiting, watching, protecting, and making your opponents look like stupid, dumb, dumb idiots compared to you and your magnificently hot roster. Will you use it to build your team and win a championship? I do not know, but yes, you probably should. The time for courage and world domination is now at ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh! Hey, okay. Hey, All right. Hey. hey. Welcome in. Hey. Oh, man, that was tough. No. Mike is very forgiving. Because the man, he knew what the potential consequences Look, Andy are. gave it his best. And yeah. you don't want to shame someone for doing their best. But sometimes your best isn't good enough. And I'm just curious, was, was, that, was that, I mean, if that was part of best. Part of the reason why I gave it a go is because this episode comes out Tuesday, June 18th. Ah, yeah, I get I get. And what's not being said is we are recording this show uh, significantly earlier than that. Um, all three of us are out of town. This is the one week of the year that we uh, have coordinated that we get a week with the families. It's right after, like, draft in UDK, and it's before three shows a week and then five shows a week. So we it took us eight years to figure out we could just – Pre-record some shows, right, and get one week where we can go and leave with our families and have a week before the season starts. But I was like, "This is like another week, and it'll seem like I'm sick for like multiple weeks when I'm not because well, we're recording." You don't know that yet. You still might be. He could be, but also the intro. When I did hits, start cracking at the end. Well, it, you did, like, yeah, but Jason, you were already cheering me on at the crack yeah, point. Yeah, look, Jason's right. It wasn't the best. But it doesn't matter because thank you. The hole in my soul that is left has been when I hear that part of the music and then the intro Good. doesn't kick in. Good. I I feel empty and sad. So that's better than nothing. <sighs> All right. Well, you know, can't wait for the. We next get to record one. another one tomorrow, <laughs> and I'm going to be trying again. Uh, welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway here with you. Uh, the Deucers present, accounted for Al Borland, Papa Josh, the Falcon in the building and uh, we have a mayhem mock draft on today's show i am the one with the power i'm going to see how you can think on your feet i don't know about that andy don't forget <laughs> i got Wait. a golden ticket so maybe i'll hold on hold the golden on that ticket is for an argument jason There's, it's not for a mock draft one free andy holloway agreement so i think if i say that uh that if i think i should be allowed to take this player al what do you think Nah. All right. Yeah, Not get out of here. That's fine. That's but no, fine. you can I save, save it. it. Yeah, keep saving it. Uh, so we got a, a mock draft today, Jason versus Mike, and I'm going to throw some mayhem in there, and we'll see how you adjust. I can't help but remember, I think the second time we ever did a mayhem mock draft was the one where I I think I ended up with five straight running backs. Yeah, it was very high T. I I made some mistakes in <laughs> um, understanding what you guys were going to do in that one. But you got to be ready for anything in a fantasy football draft. Uh, we just had a quick question on the last episode about taking onesie positions and back-to-back uh, -back or early in your drafts where it could jeopardize the depth at the positions you play multiple positions or multiple players at. So things happen in your draft. you got to be ready, and we're going we're gonna to have a fun mock draft today. The Ultimate Draft Kit available right now. All of our player projections, sleepers, breakouts, busts, and values – player profile videos, and tons more is available at ultimatedraftkit.com. 
And very, very soon, the draft analyzer will come out, so you can take a look. Not just, I mean, it, it's to analyze, you know, your drafts come draft season. But, I mean, I, I use this for my Dynasty team. Just any team you have already, you can plug it in there, you can import it, and get the grade on the team. But it'll also give you directions, guidance, like what's good, what's bad, shows you some stuff with age. That's coming out here in a couple weeks. That's right. That'll be uh, early July. So we got a lot going on. We've got a lot of coach speak happening, people talking about their players and uh, just maybe real – realigning our perceptions on maybe what depth charts looks like just for confirming teams confirming my priors mostly confirming our yeah. prior opinions which is sad but true it is but uh, you know the majority of the time that is what happens because we're human beings but there are times where we pivot where we change and you were just talking about people Z yeah. that you have been uh changing Z your tune White. on yeah exactly yeah, yeah. so uh, just, yeah i i think i I don't remember what show I brought him up. I think it might have been the Dynasty show, but it was talking about, like, are you guys hearing how the Raiders are talking about Zamir White, ex and, like, juxtaposed against how they talk about Alexander Madison, who they called, he's a depth player they for also, our team. They, and they then, have been very positive about, and this is maybe Nasty Boys. But uh, Trey Tucker? No, Dylan uh, Lobby. L oh, Lobby. yeah. Lobby, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Yeah. I think yeah. it's Lobby. Yes, the, yeah, he is. Uh, Lobby? Lobby. <laughs> Lobby. Yeah, that's right. L-A-U-B-E. Lobby. I think it's There's kind of the, almost, a, almost a syllable before the They call him B. Dylan L, is what I, <laughs> from which, what I understand. They've been talking him up big time. Dylan Lobb. Which, it, like, quick shout out, uh, Mitchell Renz, former writer of the Fantasy Footballers, he does, he's like a super Raiders guy now. Yeah. I had messaged him back in May. I'm like, like Thanks ear, for sharing. Ear to, dude, this is my private information that I'm now sharing to everybody. Uh, but ear to the ground, like, what are you hearing about Zamir? And he still, at least at that time, he's like, no, I, it it still seems like it will be a committee. But Dylan Laubi, like, yeah, like Laubi, like, yeah, well, just just well keep said. an eye, keep an eye out. I think he's going to be a versatile piece of that committee. So, and that'll be an interesting question for Zamir. First and second down work. What's yeah. it worth in Las Vegas? Yeah, it's, for Zamir White, honestly, pass catching is such a huge question mark. Yeah, because if he's if he's getting 30-plus receptions or whatever, then where he's going in drafts, I, it's a value. All right, let's jump into some news. News and notes from around the league. One more reminder, we are recording this episode uh, five days early. So the news we have on today's show, if there's updates to it, like this is a risk to even bring it up, but – you There's, have to bring up this Alvin Kamara contract yeah. situation because, of course, we just talked about my dynasty team, and I'm trying to get – I've been working to get all my players locked up long term. And you've been doing a great job, but now Alvin Kamara, he did not participate in the Saints' final practice of mandatory minicamp, uh, unexcused, and it was confirmed by his agent that this is contract-related. Um, right now he's set to earn $11.8 million, uh, which is fourth among running backs – but uh, his dead cap, I think, next year. Well, right the, the now problem is, next year is the sal the salary balloons to like essentially twenty something million dollars. Meanwhile, his salary cap that year will be twenty nine million dollars. So there is the Saints have done magical things with the cap in the past, but something has to happen. I don't, I don't know if I, that's a a move on. If he's a pre June him. first cut next year, he'd be ten million. Yeah. The, ten million in debt, which is it's a lot, but it's it's some, not twenty nine. Sometimes teams are willing to do it. Like there's there's a lot of options, but the point being, something will have to happen with Alvin Kamara and the Saints I, I don't, by next year. Yeah, I don't I don't know that that's true. It seems like as of as of right confirmed. now, confirmed. Yeah, Lowby. Yeah. That's, that's what, what we were saying. saying. Lowby. Yeah. That's what we said. See that? That's pretty fun. Yeah, that's that's the new name. Uh, Footland, his name is Lauby. Okay, and no matter how you say it, it's correct. Lau Lauby. Thank correct. you. Correct. That is correct. Get to the job. But yeah, I, so Jason, you were going to comment on Kamara's situation? Yeah, it, it, right now it seem, seems like it's at a standstill. There's not an expectation that he's going to get any kind of contract extension unless it's just a restructure to kind of kick the can down further. Um, I still bet on Andy's dynasty roster prevailing, <laughs> and so I do assume a contract will come, but right now the reporting seems like um, he's not close to getting a deal. All right, I'm really not happy with this news. Juwan Johnson, yeah. foot surgery. He'll be sidelined for a long time. He missed four games last year. It's the Saints tight end. 
Yeah. By he, the way. Yeah. Sorry. He missed four games last year. Was injured two different times. Was injured two different times the year before. Um, was injured again in 2021. Barely played in 2020. So this is like every year we're dealing with health concerns. We are. And it's starting to sap the potential. And it, it sucked because coming into last year, the reports out of uh, camp from, from beat reporters for the Saints, Jawan Johnson was being talked about a lot. And then the, like the, the start for the season was extremely slow, and, and then he got hurt. He finally started kicking things into gear over like the last quarter of the season. So it kind of just presented that hope again for this year that maybe he's a like a deep sleeper who can help you out. But he was the number one tight end in championship brutal. week, right? Last year, eight for ninety and one. Gus Edwards dealing with a oh um, something undisclosed off to the side. The High hell? possibility, according to Jim Harbaugh, that he'll be hundred percent healthy for training camp. Which that's excellent, but the. Nothing about the Chargers running back room should work. Nothing. Although, if something. he doesn't perform, he goes from Gus Bus to Gus Bust. Is that correct? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'll that, allow that it. could happen. Okay. And then the luscious locks will reign, reign supreme. <laughs> well, he, oh, you, you, you're just bypassing J.K. Dobbins. Uh, J.K. Dobbins is a TBD. We're going to see how his health is through these. You'll be talking about uh, Vidal Sassoon. Kamani Vidal yes. Sassoon. Yes, I am. I feel like if, if we go a long time without saying the real name, <laughs> this becomes quite the confusing moment. Yeah. But Kamani Vidal was a sixth round draft pick. Yeah. And Look, you know, I'm not that into so no. soon. Gus Edwards is very old for a running back to be getting his first starting opportunity. J.K. Dobbins is coming off an Achilles tear. Vidal Sassoon is a late round running back. That's what I'm saying. None of this should work. No, and it probably it probably will not. It could not work. Yeah, it could. We've absolutely. had, we've had yeah, many yeah. years in Baltimore with it not working. And, and it works from a net. The team runs a bunch, but it doesn't always work for the player. Yeah, and, and Herbert is obviously usually a pocket passer who dominates in that portion of the game. So far, the reports, like I, I, I was reading about his performance yesterday and today, and it was like he was dominating. Touchdowns everywhere in the passing game. Who was? So, Herbert, Justin Herbert oh, was yeah. was uh, really good. If, you know, I almost thought I, I I faked the thinking about what you faked J.K. Oh, Dobbins uh, okay. as my sleeper pick because I do think it's a name that shouldn't be it shouldn't be just cast off. If he is healthy, this is this is a good situation. Yeah, you nah, just want to. So I'm you're both cast him off. Him off. Yeah, I won't. I, I won't cast him. Off. I don't want to. I am. A, I am a J.K. Dobbins stand. Don't but, believe you. You're clearly not. You're casting him off. Yeah, because of the Achilles. Okay, that that's fine, but you can't say you're a J.K. Dobbins fan. I can, but the power of the Achilles tear. He's speaking of the former everything. self. That yeah, yeah, you could say you were. Go okay, ahead, try fine. that on for size. I was. There you go. Raiders wide receiver Devontae Adams has given rookie tight end Brock Bowers the nickname BM. Oh, man. This is not news from every show. It's news for this show. Now this is Brock for BM Bowers. This is this is for It's done. Businessman. Okay, businessman is what I mean, call he, him Brock Bowles. <laughs> he, he, Number 2. He literally said, so I gave him that nickname. He nicknamed him Devonte, buddy. BM. For like, businessman. And for some reason, Brock Bowers seemed he really didn't like it very much. I mean, now if you're out there and you're like I don't get the joke which means you're eight years old, and that's fine. Welcome to the show. We, we all are welcome. A healthy BM. <laughs> no, you see, that's a bowel movement. Look, hey, if it, he's if he's regular for fantasy football, he's gonna be a healthy BM. I mean, you want him. You don't want him injured, right? This is an no. important player. This you is, need a healthy BM. This is if you want to succeed at this position for the Raiders. <laughs> no, no, turn off the flushing. No, sound. no this flush goes forever. <laughs> All I know is that this Brock Bowers has not started his career, and this is a catastrophic yes. situation for him. It's really a turn, oh, man. and it's Devontae it's Adams' fault. Oh, I heard <laughs> turn. Also, turn. Uh, producers, please chop up that minute and send that to the academy when we're uh, going for sports when, Emmys. When we, yeah, we're trying to get some Emmys. That's the moment. You do want a healthy BM, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah we at, yeah, your, tight end, want, at your tight end position, Brock. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it. It all works. <laughs> it, it all works. You you want your tight end to have a healthy. Cheers, BM. everybody. We're on vacation right now. 
a healthy businessman. <laughs> Commanders Dan Quinn, head coach, oh, man. said the team has not determined their starting quarterback. That's nonsense. It's stupid and a lie, Dan. Don't be so stupid. Don't do Where this. Where you say stupid things like this. this. It's so dumb. It's so Dan Quinn. This is the fast track to become the coach who is hated. Um, also, how do just, we not have that? There are some situations, teams where it's like, yeah, of course, the the rookie's not going to start, right? We don't we don't know if Drake May is going to start. Jacoby Brissett's a legitimate. Oh, we do. Well, but my of point, course we do. Well, no, I'm saying week one. No, the music. Oh, oh, yeah. I forgot about this. This was the Cardinals off season music. But like, but like Minnesota because our next the the next piece is just Sam Darnold is, is dominating the first team reps. Sam Darnold starting for the Minnesota Vikings for the first half of the season That's realistic. is realistic. Yes, it yes. does not shock me. Jaden Daniels, the number two overall pick, or Marcus Mariota? Well, no, no, no. It's not just that. Jaden Daniels has literally been a starter in the collegiate level for 12 years. He's like, <laughs> he is so <laughs> old, ready. has so much experience. And then the stupidest part about all of it, uh, June 11th, 11 on 11s, who's the first team guy? Who's playing first team reps for Jaden Daniels? Jaden Daniels. He's okay. already out there taking first team reps over Marcus Mariota. Don't, don't want to get him to. You don't want a big head, man. Don't come out and be like, we, well, I don't know. I mean, yes. he's taking first team reps, and we drafted him to be that, and he's got total experience. But I don't know. Yes, you do. Don't just don't be a liar. Such a BM. Uh, <laughs> Sam <Business> Darnold man? <laughs> will be the first team quarterback yeah. when Minnesota begins camp, like you said. So that one seems really possible. I I, I totally agree. Yeah, McCarthy is. A lesser experienced collegiate player makes sense. He's got a lot of experience in pro offenses, though. But yeah, I mean the system makes sense to transition nicely. But it just far as far as collegiate starts, I mean you don't have a lot of people that have as many starts as Jaden Daniels. When he's just he wasn't a top three pick, right? Yeah. You yeah. you have margin. Like if Sam Darnold comes out in the first three weeks, it's the the Vikings are now zero and three. Then the mob's going to get really loud really fast. But you're probably going to start with the vet all right that is it for news and notes today we'll take a break come back with a mock draft all right let's get into it the fantasy footballers mock draft All right, we have a Mayhem Mock Draft. So if you haven't been a part of one of those before, this one's going to be Jason versus Mike. Right now, Mike is going to be drafting from the 107. Jason, the 110. It's a 12-team. Today we're doing full PPR. One quarterback, two running back, two wide receiver, a, a tight end, a flex, and four bench spots. I will have the opportunity at my discretion to break into the draft and use a mayhem against you two gentlemen. I can veto the pick, which means that you need to choose another player at a different position. I can replace a pick, so that's my choice. I get to make the pick for you. And then I have the ability to give you a, an opponent's choice mayhem, which is self-explanatory. The other person is going to make the pick for you. Well, you said it was self-explanatory. Yeah, then you explain it. You don't explain do self-explanatory stuff. Just just sounds stupid now. Lowby. Lowby. That's <laughs> it's Dylan Lowby. We looked it up. Yeah, we did. Rhymes with wow. It does. It actually in the pronunciation <laughs> guy says it rhymes with wowby. Wow. Wow. Wowby. Lowby. Yeah, that rhymes. We're so stupid. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I hope people are still <laughs> this listening. This is vacation mode. Um. So you guys ready? Yep. All right. We're kicking it off here. Tyreek Hill in a full PPR goes 101. McCaffrey, 102. Amon Ross St. Brown at 103. Lamb, 104. Chase at 105. Jefferson, 106. So that puts Mike on the clock. Round one, 107, full PPR. What are you thinking about? So the, like those, you know, the, the big time, Wide receivers have gone. Like I really like I like AJ Brown, Puka, Garrett Wilson, but they're just they're not in that in the tier of wide receivers who have gone. And I'm I'm going to try and start this draft off with running back, so it automatically for me becomes Brees Hall or Bijan, which is a that's a very difficult choice to me. Jason shrugging because it's uh, easily Bijan for you, or well, it is easily Bijan to me. But I, the shrug wasn't because it was obvious between the two. It was 
who cares? So what? Who cares? <laughs> like, you're, the, you're, it's a good problem to have. If you're on that right. spot and you're like, oh, gosh, I've got to decide between Brees Hall or Bijan, it's like, okay. And right now, Brees Hall is ahead in my ranking, so I'm just going to stick with that. Okay. Now, y y you did make the selection. I didn't figure you were going to take over my first pick. You, you don't know. Yeah, you don't know. Oh, crap. But I, I wasn't. So, um, <laughs> Brees Hall is who you went with. That's who I would have gone with. Uh, Bijan goes next, and then A.J. Brown. Now, Jason, you are you're on the clock. I am on the clock. There's a couple of guys that I really, really like here. I was, you know, knowing where I was at the 10, I was thinking that Puka would probably be my pick pre-draft. Uh, I think he's going to be a great PPR asset even if he doesn't necessarily hit all the ceiling numbers he did last year. This is still his second year. You know, rookies usually get better going into year two of the system. All that being said, I have, according to my rankings, a monstrous, absurdly high season coming for Jameer Gibbs. And in full PPR, all the more, he's going to catch a ton of passes this season. So I'm going to try to pull a mic here. Oh. And I will select Jameer Gibbs if allowed. Mr. Yeah, go for it. All go right. for it. Jameer Gibbs off the board. So, Brees Hall, Jameer Gibbs, you both have running backs in round one. Perfect. Puka Nakua goes next. <laughs> Saquon Barkley uh, at the 12th pick. Garrett Wilson at 201, full PPR. I don't Man. mind that. Jonathan Taylor off the board at 202. So, Jason, you're back on the clock. Jameer Gibbs, your first rounder. Now you have to make a decision. And you don't, I don't know. I think he does. Uh, I think it's an easy pick. You me. really do, huh? I do. Oh, man. It's it an is. easy pick for me. What is the pick then, Mike? Kyron Williams. Yeah, so uh, so there's a game here. Um, it, <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> you, you dummy. You jerk. Just play. Just say who you want to take. I would, Starting with Jameer Gibbs and Kyron Williams. I would, at love, the 10 would, I would be, love to do that. Mayhem is not supposed to be expected. Okay. Well, I'm always on pins and needles. I, I would – the wide receivers here, Marvin Harrison. I love. I'm a Cardinals fan. I would love to have him. It's really hard to select him at the very end of the first or the very beginning of the second, where you have to take him. Devontae Adams is great, but I'm not excited. His arrow isn't pointing up. Then you go to the Londons and the Olave. So I feel like wide receivers here are going to be about the same as the wide receivers at the next turn. So I would rather go running back. I would definitely take Kyron Williams and start with Gibbs and Kyron if allowed. Mr. Commissioner. Yeah, go for it. Oh, yay. Fun. That that would be a lethal start. Gibbs and Kyron at 110 and 203. You had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wideouts in the first round. Three more in the second, including Adams and Harrison going next. That puts Mike on the clock. Brees Hall is his running back from the first round. So, looking at it, um, just – you know, also still trying to experiment with other types of builds because of the mock. Where I'm looking at the rankings for Devon Achan, and he is so difficult to rank because when we rank, we do projections, and you're looking more at a median uh, outcome for a player when you're when you're trying to give them just hard statistics, and it's difficult to say no, this guy is going to run for eight yards a carry or whatever. So he so HN is low in my RB ranks, but I want him on my team. And it, but so the point being of like, do you take someone like HN or do you take someone more steady like Travis Etienne, who is in my top ten? Like, Catches a lot of passes. So I and and there, and at this spot, like HN would not possibly come back. So for the just for the experiment. I would select A-Chan right here because I want to see what my roster looks like If at the end. Do I like making that pivot? All right, go for it. All right. Wow. This is just a mock draft, Mike. It's because you guys are making dumb picks. Um, <laughs> Devon A-Chan at 206. Drake London, Ayuk, Laporta, Olave. ETN goes to at 211, uh, 211. I think that is quite the steal in a PPR. Josh Allen at 212. Jacobs at 301. Debo. Kelsey, Nico, Pittman, and DJ Moore. So you had six more wide receivers off the board before Mike's pick here. The so, real question is, you know, who do you want and who are you not getting? <laughs> All right. 
Uh, the player I would draft, it would be pretty easy. So the wider – I don't want to go – well, running back – well, I guess, okay, running backs, Derrick Henry is there, Pacheco, and Rashad White. So I guess there are three running backs who I – you guys have four ru running backs through two rounds. Correct. Yeah, it's very so I, high two right I, now. I, I was going to say, I think people might want to hear a little bit more about the thought process there with a million wide receivers going off the board in full PPR. Because we're like we're at a uh, – This is like, going to be the normal PPR situation where right. perceived value at running back because wide receivers go off the board. But you both went that way. Wide receivers are very push-up. I know for me when I'm at the end of the first round, so I'm at basically the 3-4 turn or near there, there are a lot of wide receivers I like. There are you're, – you're usually usually you can get one of the um, the Texan wide receivers. I like Cooper Cup there. I like Devontae Smith. There's a, there's a handful of players that I'm comfortable with, especially if I can get two of those guys. So that's why I was fine taking what I perceive to be superstar running backs at the 1-2 turn. So at, the, at if I were taking a running back, I would. Do, do you want me to announce both picks that I would take? I don't. How do you want me to play the game? For I just you? want you to go about your business making your pick. Okay. And then ask me whether you're allowed okay. to. So because it's the PPR, I would take Rashad White of the guys left. Uh, so even just, even then, here, you would not think about going. No, no. I'm, I'm saying if I went running back, that's where I would go. Gotcha. But. My real pick would end up being Jalen Waddle, who I am extremely bullish on. I think that there is a a massive bounce back happening for uh, the supposed wide receiver too. And so like, that's I, the pick. Yeah, I'm just saying like that would I, be the pick. That would be, the, and that loads me up on the Dolphins. I do understand that, but A. Chan and Waddle to me are special players that I'm okay because it'll be because Waddle and Tyreek are like the entirety of the passing offense, and then A. Chan involved a little bit. I'd be okay with it. Mayhem. Okay, fair enough. We have to get this going. Mm hmm I just wanted to see what beds you'd make. Okay. Before you had to start thinking. I'm going to, uh, on this one, I'm going to make the pick for you. Because I have seen your rankings. And I know how excited you are about certain players. Uh -huh. And I know you like Jalen Waddle, And that yeah. would be strong consideration. But in my opinion, you're sitting here. Laporta's gone. Kelsey's gone. Your number one tight end is on the board in a PPR. He is. He is. And you're going to take him here. You're going to take him before someone else can take him. you got a long wait for your okay. next pick. You're going 306, 307 Trey McBride here, Mike. Okay. Go ahead and make the selection. It's it, – worst things could have happened to me. <laughs> so you, you went Trey McBride. You thought yeah. about quarterback, but you went Trey McBride. Derrick Henry goes next. Mike Evans. Jason, you are in a – an interesting situation because you have Gibbs and Kyron. The best start at running back you could have potentially in a PPR. I mean, you do have a McCaffrey ETN team here, but there's only three teams that started with two running backs. You guys are two of them. Give me your thought process here. Yeah, I mean, here I'm, I am looking at wide receiver. I'm, you know, starting running back, running back. I would prefer to go with wide receiver looking at my rankings and, and who's left on the board. There are plenty of good options. The aforementioned Jalen Waddell. I like Cooper Cup. Um, I expect him to have a slight bounce back, not to previous super-duper stardom, but to health. And when he was on the field last year, he was actually still pretty good. We talked about him on the last episode. So I've given the opportunity here. I'd like to I'd like to draft – oh, no, I wouldn't. I've got Kyron Williams. I don't want I – don't, I, don't oh. I don't want to double that up. <laughs> I don't want to double – I don't want to double the Rams like, here. <laughs> um, in that case, I would also go Jalen Waddle. Andy hates Jalen Wan. It's tempting to just give you Cooper Cup because I feel like you could have stumbled into that in a real draft <laughs> and made the mistake. Uh huh. People are human. Um. And so let's go ahead and do that. Oh, All right. Yeah. Go ahead and take okay. Cooper Cup All right. because you were, you know you see the name. It's a third round. It's PPR. That's not necessarily a bad pick at all. No, I I I like Cup and I think both can succeed. Usually, if I'm talking about a second and third rounder, I. Would prefer to not have a running back and wide receiver from the same team, but it, it's I'll survive. Were you saying something, Mike? I was saying like I have one hundred percent done that in drafts in my past. Of well, you almost did it with H. Chan and Waddle, but I'm like where I was okay with it. I'm saying I've had it happen. I think there was a year where oh, where you didn't notice where I took like ew, this was back the Alfred Morris years of Washington, Pierre Garcon and then, years, and then later on I took Pierre Garcon and immediately was like oh no, just what? got too caught up in seeing the name yep, there. Yep. All right, so Gibbs, Kyron Cup, Brees, Achan, McBride, 
After Cup went Waddle finally off the board. Neither of you got him. I don't know why they were. He was sitting there for both. Yeah, of Yeah, we games. probably should have drafted. Yeah, him. I, I should have taken him. Uh, Diggs goes at three twelve. Mind you, Nico went at three oh four. I like paying attention to where the Texans' wideouts are going. Rashad White, who Mike wanted to potentially take. Bye. Goodbye. Isaiah Pacheco at four oh two. Jason, you're back on the clock. So I'm gonna be. I'm going to be pretty happy here if I get a wide receiver because starting with Cooper Cup and either Devontae Smith or DK Metcalf or Tank Dell, guys that I see as a really good wide receiver two option for your team, along with my two powerful running backs I would be happy with. And I, I feel like there's a, those three guys and then a massive gap. To me, in my tiers, my rankings, uh, you know, going down to the Zay Flowers types, the, the, the questionable Malik neighbors who could be a great pick, but obviously you're – Playing with a little bit of fire, so I will try to draft the guy that I've been getting in every single draft because I know I'm just way higher than ADP. He's always there for me as my wide receiver, too. I would take DK Metcalf. Am I allowed? <laughs> Mayhem. You got a long wait yeah. for wide receiver, so I'm going to go with my pick again. Mayhem? I, I get to pick again, but you not get to pick the again. same position, but you which can't pick really the same position. Ruins it for me. Well, thankfully, I want to see what it thins out to when you've made the Gibbs Kyron decision early. And oh, I do too. <laughs> I do too. I want to see how that works. Um, so much curiosity. I'm just so curious. In the air. What's crazy is both Mike and I are going to end up, thanks to Mayhem, with one wide receiver through four rounds. That's going to be Maybe. a little dicey. <laughs> <laughs> I guess at most. You're counting my chickens. Um, I love Jalen Hurts. It's him and Josh Allen in most leagues. Him falling into the fourth round is a layup for me. So if I can't have a wide receiver, I got my stars at running back. I'll add Jalen Hurts to the roster. Any thought in a PPR to have gone Mark Andrews there? Yeah, I, I mean, Mark Andrews, I think, is underrated and is great. But if you look at what Mark Andrews is to the tight end position, he is not what Jalen Hurts is to the quarterback position. So I wouldn't take him over Hurts. Okay, so Hurts at 403. Hurts, Cup, Kyron, and Gibbs. Stroud goes next. So that would be um, that would be Stroud ahead of Mahomes. People are crazy out there. That's too rich. That is. I, uh, well, yeah, I'm not, I, I think you will see it. I think so, too. Malik Neighbors at 405. Mike, you are back on the clock. You are fresh off of a, a pretty uh, incredible Trey McBride yeah. selection in the yep. third. I didn't know you loved him that much. Hey, number one. But um, what are you thinking about here? I mean, Mark Andrews is on the board. <laughs> <laughs> Just the old. Give me the pick. Who says it's a onesie? I'm going to play him in my flex. Right. Uh, I am looking at the wide receiver position, and it's – I mean, the ADP is correct of Devonta Smith, DK Metcalf, Tank Dell. Those are the guys who are left. Uh, How do you feel about that as your wide receiver one? It's not my favorite thing in, in the entire world. Uh, and it's – I think it, where it, it also is extra difficult is, look, Devonta Smith is – is the wide receiver two on his team? Tank Dell is. I don't know. You know, like maybe he's the one to three on any given week. <laughs> yeah, maybe he's the one. Meanwhile, DK Metcalf, who I'm not as high on as Jason is, he's the number one guy on the team. So is do I take the player like because I have Tank Dell higher in my rankings by a little bit than than DK Metcalf, but the the case for ceiling. D is DK Metcalf bounces back and he is the true number one for Seattle. That is such the most difficult decision is taking twos with yes. a Stroud or a T. Higgins with a Burrow or taking the one with a Geno Smith. Yeah. So I it's hard to fight just the the emotional appeal of it. I think I would I think I'd go DK Metcalf is would be my pick. You can go ahead and make that pick. All right. Go ahead and take him. Eat that, Jason. <laughs> DK Metcalf <laughs> off the board. It's a good pick. Um Brees Hall, HN, McBride, Metcalf, and we will take a quick break and I'll come back and read the picks all the way up to Mike's fifth round selection. <sighs> After Metcalf, Mike's team is Hall, HN, McBride, and Metcalf. Jason has Gibbs, Kyron, Cup, and Hertz. After Metcalf, it went Mahomes, Lamar, Devontae Smith. Mixon, Andrews, Ken Walker, Kamara, Flowers, Cooper, James Cook, George Pickens, who you might have been eyeballing, and Dalton Kincaid off the board at 506. 
seeing this board real quick, I know I made you take Trey McBride. Yeah. That was a mayhem. Jason, would you rather have McBride at 307 or Kincaid at 506? Oh, I would rather have Kincaid at 506. Okay. A two-round gap, because if you look at the players, you know, that that were drafted after McBride, you know, Nico Collins, um, or, I'm sorry, Derek, Derek Henry was after him. Uh, if I could add that with Kincaid versus the running backs on the board, absolutely. All right, Mike, you're back on the clock. And you ha you let out kind of a disgusted sigh. Uh, hey, did you have something bad for lunch? No, no, I actually, I did okay for lunch. Um, but I may end up with some tummy problems. The it, it, just quick note about because you were talking about the board. I think we're all in agreement that Zay Flowers is going too high in drafts. I, I am in agreement. Yeah. Yeah. I Where mean, are I, you at? Yes, ahead of Cooper and Pickens, I would not be putting him there. Okay. It's, but I do worry. I just don't want to swing the pendulum too far on our doubts for him because. You know, he's a young player that contributed in year one, made right. big plays, and has the ability to move forward. We got news that Rashad Bateman is doing Rashad Bateman things in camp. <laughs> Which he's irrelevant. It's, they don't have Beckham, right? Like, I mean, they, they, there are. Right, yeah, yeah. Like, Zay Flowers needs to be properly drafted, not ignored out of, out of like, an anger that he's too high and not drafted too high just because you're excited about him as a sophomore. The hilarity of months of – Everyone on the team trying to prop up Rashad Bateman, including the coach, and then yeah, this is that is then, exactly what it is. And then we just got this. Yeah, look, it's a it's an opinion, but it's not great to have that ha happen. Anyways, point being, Tank Dell, who I would have been happy to take at four oh six, fell to me at five oh seven, and that is my pick. Yeah, yes, that's, yeah, that's yes. the problem. Yes. that's the problem. I'm going to give Jason this selection for you so he can make the pick for your team. 507, Jason, it is your selection. Now, you Ooh. have a pick three away. Okay. So, um, all right. Well, let me see here. I can go any position here. He really needs a wide receiver, so that's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Mike. Okay. Um, running backs, there's still some, uh, there, there's some value there. I like Aaron Jones. Andy doesn't. He'd love if I picked Aaron Jones. Uh, you already have a tight end. I'm not going to do something insane no, like double tight want... end stack you. I am going to actually give you someone that I think is a value in the fifth round. It is a gamble. I Not not a value. It's not a value. He's a good selection for the potential upside. I know he's throwing with his left hand, but I think Anthony Richardson is a valuable player All here. Right. And, you know, starting with one wide receiver going into your sixth round is going to be tough. It sure is. Oh, yeah, I got to make the pick. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, cool. Anthony Richardson. Oh, take Dell fell to me. Am I allowed to take take Dell, Andy? Yeah, go for it. What a great pick. Man, how lucky am I? Um, Yeah, you're super huh. lucky. Anthony, <laughs> Mike's loving this. Huh. <laughs> Anthony Richardson at 507, Connor Pitts, and then Dell to Jason. You did that very quickly. Oh, yeah. Keenan Allen, T. Higgins, George Kittle, DeAndre Swift. Um. You're back on the clock in the sixth round. I'm not going to make you go through the song and dance. I'm going to give Mayhem. I'm going to give Mike the ability to make this pick for you. I it will be a small, you know, salve to the pain he's endured. Mm -hmm. But Mike, if you want to undermine his roster, you can feel free. He's got Gibbs, Kyron, Cup, Dell, and Hurts. It's actually pretty. I feel like I pretty, know who he's going to give me. Good. Oh, just do you? to just to hurt me. <laughs> Just to hurt me bad. I wish I could identify who that player was. Oh, do you want me to work with you? Yeah. He's, he's healthy. Yeah. He's, um, <laughs> I, I, I looked at the ADP. I wasn't sure if it was too out of control, but if you needed to make sure you had uh, Brock BM Bowers uh, on the roster. But I'm, I'm not going to go that far. I'm not going to stray away from the ADP because your roster, look, we are – it's PPR. We want those wide receivers. This guy was drafted to be – great along with his uh rookie quarterback yeah. uh but somehow here in the sixth round he's still on the clock uh, or on the board mr rome adunze uh, really you went adunze i wish this was a dynasty <laughs> league because i think he's a good player yeah but i do not want him to be my wide receiver three that's with adp with ppr yeah that is with he ADP. was at the very top interesting i didn't pull i didn't pull any shenanigans i just gave you Best available wide receiver. Well, thank you, Mike. The crowd. I mean, I am happy to get a third wide receiver. That would have been the position I would have gone after with the quarterback. Good Lord, I have one. <laughs> yeah. 
Are there any more uh, Mayhem's left for Mike? Or yeah, yeah, Andy's pick. Oh, fantastic. Uh, Andy. No, you have a pick again, different position. That's the one I have left. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you gave I me Trey McBride. I already gave yeah, you Trey McBride. <laughs> so, Adunze, Jones, Montgomery, Mike, you're back on the clock. You have Brees Hall, A-Chan, McBride, Metcalf, and Richardson. So, I wish it could be Rasheed Rice, but we still have no idea what's going on with – his off the field shenanigans turning into a multi game suspension of some sort. Uh, this tier of players here, so it's like Christian Kirk's at the top, Rice, Terry McLaurin, who's just always been good, but now you have the rookie quarterback. I think honestly, like if if this were my roster, I'd be looking at I need I need a player I know that is gonna at least give me something, so I would take Christian Kirk. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Oh, uh, go for it. You oh. can take Christian Kirk. I know I could put you into. I wanted a... you to just zip up the body bag <laughs> and throw him in the ocean. Yeah, I could have. That was that was the name that like, from a reliability standpoint, that was the threshold. Yes, it, this is the type of build where you are, you are dreaming of Christian Kirk. You know, if you need your wide receiver two, and you're this late in full PPR, you want just. I know he might not have the upside as some of the players that were on the, the board, but he, his floor is so high. He is reliable. He's going to have a ton of targets in this offense. I, I think it's a great pick. Ramondre goes at 6.07, then Rice, Burrow, Prescott, McLaurin, and Ingram to finish the sixth round. Godwin, Kyler, Mostert, Pollard, Addison, Najee Harris. Mike, you're back on the clock. So let's see. So I got Brees Hall. I'm actually now just I'm balanced, but I have two onesies in here making it feel really bad at the depth for this team. But Brees Hall, Devon Achan, McBride. Achan's a bit of a, of a wild card. Yeah, which that was I, – I Part knew, of it, I yeah. knew what I was getting myself into not going with Travis Etienne right there. Uh, Metcalf, Richardson, Christian Kirk. and Is the, there somebody that you love right here? Like one name? Uh, there is not somebody I love, but the, it would be another – I'm going to try and lock in some PPR value. And he does sit atop of the ADP – uh, it's Jaden Reed would would likely be my pick. Just real quick, working through it, like Xavier Worthy. I'm okay with the value right here, shooting for upside. But I mean, if he misses, that's going to be devastating for my team. I'm not in on Hollywood Brown, Calvin Ridley, maybe. Uh, with the with the contract and the hope with Will Levis, but I would take Jaden Reed. I try to get the presumed number one PPR guy for Jordan Love. But that so that's my pick. That's what well I'm thought out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mayhem. Oh, I mean, I have to take another position. Yeah, you got to take another position. He threw you in the ocean in a body bag, but he didn't zip it up all the way. You have a chance, oh my Mike. Gosh. This is great. <laughs> no, it, because I'm picking a running back. I have a quarterback and I have a tight end. It's all right. You got your guy. We were talking about him earlier. Was you Zamir? Have, yeah, yeah. yeah. Zamir yeah. on the board. But like I said, the big question mark was Zamir. You White got Moss. Is, is he going to catch passes? Yeah. Zach Moss, I feel more confident, is going to catch passes. So is that going to be the? It pick? might be a reach ADP wise, but I'm going to take Zach Moss. I don't think that's bad. I no, think your I wide think receivers so. are bad. Uh, <laughs> Jaden Reed goes next. Nick Chubb. At and, least there's two of them. <laughs> yeah, at least there's two, and that is due to my mercy. Um, all right, Jason. You, three of your last four picks were wideouts: Cup, Dell, Odunze. You had Jalen Hurts in there, and then Gibbs and Kyron to start the draft mm -hmm. i'm out of mayhem so you guys are cruising here to finish this draft out yeah we, nice. can do, we can do whatever we want um there are a handful of players i really really like the player that i i want to take lad mcconkey there, there's two players here that i want one lad mcconkey and jonathan brooks both rookies uh lad mcconkey has the, re the reports from otas have been outstanding yeah. he's dominating he's getting all the targets um huge is just doing his best rashad bateman and He's so, doing his best just in life, man. Yeah. And so I Wait, have there been actual negative reports about Huge? Uh th there have been just not thrilling reports. Yeah, about it's Huge. been like shiny stuff for Lad McConkey and then like Huge is still, still there. there. Yeah. Um honestly, I'm looking at like I personally believe in Lad McConkey. <laughs> I like his opportunity and I am doubtful on Calvin Ridley. But Andy has been so bullish on Calvin Ridley that it, 
you have really talked me into, you know, and, and you look at the ADP, I mean, Calvin Ridley is a huge value here, whereas Lad McConkey's a slight reach. Calvin Ridley in the seventh is silly. It, it does feel that way, given the fact that my team started with two running backs and took a quarterback in the first four picks. I'm going to go with old reliable and Calvin Ridley over Lad McConkey, and then we'll see if uh, Lad comes back to me. He does not. So then I'll go Jonathan Brooks. Uh, this that is a, was quick. This is a running back that I said I want to leave almost every draft with. I just hope his ADP stays down, and he is. Which the, we, we, the last report was on the negative side. Yes, exactly, which I was thrilled about. Um, after Ridley, Worthy, Love, McConkey ahead of you, and then BM at 802. Just want to let you know where he went. You went Jonathan Brooks, then Zamir White off the board, so Mike could not back, uh, not combo Moss into Zamir, not that he would. And then <laughs> Hollywood <laughs> Brown at 8.05. Mike, you're on the clock. You're looking wide out. Can I interest you in Austin Eckler? No, you cannot. Uh, so <laughs> I have I have two good wide receivers. <laughs> Are you talking in a mirror? I'm, I'm talking to the audience right now. Just, I'm holding on for dear life, and even like there's no one else on the ADP chart anywhere close where I'm like, yeah, that's I feel like that's a good reliable source of PPR. I mean, Hopkins and Deontay Johnson are known players, but full attachments to those offenses. I don't know if I want to do it. Uh, so, what so, wideouts are you thinking about? So I. I'm going to swing for some upside here. Like uh, Christian Watson at this point is like you missed out on Jaden Reed. He is a man of of interest for me because if they do fix the hamstring injury, it's a big if. But when when everyone was healthy on uh, healthy and playing for the Packers last year, Christian Watson was the number one guy by a lot in terms of target share. But I'm going to swing and hope that I got Josh Allen's number one wide receiver. Keon Coleman, the rookie for Buffalo. All right, you want Keon Coleman in the eighth round. Hopkins, Eckler, Javante, Warren, Brian Thomas, who I would have brought up if you had not already drafted Christian Kirk. Yeah. Brian Robinson, possibly an 8-12 value. They say he's going to catch some passes. Eckler and Brian Robinson both going in the eighth round. Adonai Mitchell, Deontay Johnson, Devin Singletary, Najoku and Goddard. I don't know if Jason's shaking his head because he wanted Najoku later. Um, Purdy. And then, Mike, you're back on the clock. You've got your onesies. You're building depth with these last three picks. Yeah, and I was happy to take Christian Watson last round, so I am very interested to take him now. Jason yeah. made a sound. Well, uh oh, is that Fergalicious? That was Fergalicious. Fergalicious, I, the final ripcord. I was Jake exactly Ferguson right. off the board. <laughs> Jake Ferguson is the final ripcord of my tight end rankings. I was wanting David Njoku or uh, Ferguson to come back to me. After those guys, there's really no one that I like for a long time, but the name will look good, and this is a mock draft. I'm going to take TJ Hawkinson. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I wanted Ferguson, but it's all right. I'm just going to – So who's your starting tight end? Yeah, it's going to be uh, – Hawkinson will go to IR, and I'll I'll pick up a great uh, streamer for week one. Tua, Benson, Schultz, who you could have drafted, and Goff, you're back on the clock, your second-to-last pick. Which just real quick that so the team eleven that's an auto drafting team but they took Tua and then Goff right away on on the coming back in I don't hate that not a bad comment I don't hate that at all just the like the odds of one of those guys being able to be a, a close to plug and play I I think you can hit if you get them both so I I know who my pick is going to be here I just want to verify my roster I've got Gibbs Kyron Williams and Jonathan Brooks so make sure it's still there uh. Cooper Cup, Tank Dell, Roma Dunze, and Calvin Ridley. I, well, I know who I want, but I just – I'm seeing with Brooks not active, do I need to go You need running a running back. back. Do yeah. you think I need to go running was, back? Because I want Jackson Smith and Jigba bad. You I need think another running back, but I don't. you don't have to take it here. Oh, man. Unless you feel like there's a huge teardrop. But that's the first thing I thought of when I looked yeah. at your team was Jonathan Brooks could literally not be active and you've got two running backs. Yeah, and and when I look at the wide receivers, there's a couple of guys. You know, you could take a shot on Jameson Williams. I love the value here of Jackson Smith and Jigba. I I love it, but given my roster and given the running backs that are left, how I view them versus, um, wh you know where they are in ADP. I think Tajay Spears as a year two guy 
is going to be a fine running back. It's a PPR. He'll catch a lot of passes. Don't think we've seen him drafted by any of our teams yet. So I will add him to the roster, Tajay Spears. All right, uh, Jameson Williams and Jaden Daniels go next. Mike, you're back on the clock. You no longer have two wideouts. You have four. I have five. Jackson Smith and Jake. Oh. <laughs> Very well done. Curtis Samuel, Gus Bus, Zeke. Those two names were also, I thought, maybe in consideration for you, Jay. Sutton, Herbert, Lockett, Ford, Dobbs, Chase Brown, Blake Corum, Friar Muth, Musgrave. I almost took Jas Jackson JSN because <laughs> Did you just abandon yeah, trying to yeah, say it? Yep, hundred percent. Jason. I I like Jaza. Jaza. Wow. Dylan Lowby. Um because I wanted uh, <laughs> Ford to come back to me. I think that would have been – Ford would not have made it past me. And, it, yeah. and the fact that you had two I, picks before me, I knew there was no chance. I so. wanted him to drop to me. Yeah, but – All right, Mike, you're back on the clock. Final pick. So, my running back room – like, we're, we're only going 11 rounds, so it's a shallow team. Uh, Jerome Ford would have been a pretty easy pick for me. You know, get a guy who can uh, – at the beginning of the year, I feel pretty confident at this point. Um. But similar to that, I did bring him up the other day of Chuba Hubbard. Uh, yeah. I, I think that the start of the year He's while, looking great too. while Jonathan Brooks is recovering, I think that Chuba is in the 11th round, a guy who like you can start. He, you'll be, be able, I think you'll be able to start him as an RB2, but it's short term. Like there's, that's a rental, which it it's a, just what is your strategy? Uh, and then Kendra Miller is another interesting name. Second year running back for the New Orleans Saints. You assume they're going to get all this stuff figured out with Camara, but it's it's a little murky. And then Ty Chandler, I've talked about him, and Mar and also Marshawn Lloyd for the Green Bay Packers, their rookie running back. Who look if Josh Jacobs is anything close to what he was last year, I think that Marshawn Lloyd will get on the field quickly. And and I think he's a player who has some juice and can get some things done. So I'm I'm actually I'm just going to go that route. Mm. Uh, I'm going to take Marshawn Lloyd. That was that was who I was going to take though, Mike. Oh. A great pick. I, I like it a lot. I think that's 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 your really team good. could your team could have had Jason and Lloyd, and then his team has that. <laughs> yeah, enjoy your your Seahawks with Metcalf as well. So yeah. um, have fun. I'm I'm looking at the wide receivers. That's who I would prefer to take, but I I, I don't really love anybody there. Mike Williams. We don't know if he's going to come back. Xavier Leggett. Uh, I'm not sure with Bryce if he's going to be a good rookie player. And there is a running back that I actually want well, some I, pieces of. I think Lee get here. I mean, if you need a running back, it's fine. But it, Xavier Lee get a first round, uh, rookie wide receiver in the eleventh round. Like that's yeah, you could take a shot. A good there. shot to take. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind it at all. But I'm actually going to take a, a shot on. You're going to get a starting tight end. I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get Zach Charbonnet, a player that we really loved the value of. Yeah, rookie year was a, a disappointment behind uh, Kenneth Walker, and then there's a new team in town, and I want. I want to. I, I still believe in Zach Charbonnet. So as a backup running back, he's obviously not a starter. I'm fine having him. Why don't you guys run back your rosters as we close out this mayhem mock draft, and then give me, you know, give me an idea of your sentiment around the. Situation All you've right. been put in. Uh, my running backs, I have Brees Hall, Devon A. Chan, Zach Moss, and Marshawn Lloyd. I have DK Metcalf, Christian Kirk, Keon Coleman, Christian Watson, Jackson Smith, and Jigba at my wide receiver crew. Trey McBride is my tight end. Anthony Richardson is my quarterback. So, I mean, the power of my onesie positions is strong, but it did – it hurt the, the wide receivers. I need one of Coleman, Watson, or JSN to come through. And I've got onesies of Jalen Hurts, awesome, and TJ Hawkinson, clearly awesome and healthy, super healthy. What a big name on your roster. Thank just, you. I mean, so good last Such year. Such a great Before name. the catastrophic knee injury. <laughs> Running backs, I've got uh, Gibbs, Kyron Williams, Jonathan Brooks, Tajay Spears, and Zach Charbonnet. And at wide receiver, Cooper Cup, Tank Dell, Roma Dunze, thank you, Mike, Yeah, and Calvin Ridley. All right, the entire draft board, you can go see that on YouTube if you'd like. You can go over to youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. In fact, I insist you do. Go over there. You click, must. Click the bell, subscribe, and uh, follow the show as we have new episodes coming out each and every week, including an AMA episode on Thursday this week. Next week, we'll get into early breakouts and sleepers, including early values and busts on Thursday and a whole lot more. So, uh, one other quick reminder, if you want to come see the show live, we've got a 10th anniversary live show celebration in Los Angeles, ballerslive.com. Come 
celebrate 10 years of fantasy footballers with us. It will be a live show. It will be one of our actual release podcasts, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And so our that producers is, have some excellent stuff in mind for Al this Al has show. been just in the yeah. shop. I can't yeah. wait to see. I, so there's, there's so many secret meetings going on. I'm so impressed. Yeah. If it's not a secret giant shark, I'll be disappointed. <laughs> That's BallersLive.com. Thank you for listening to today's episode of the show. Until next time, I'll be, I'll be back. <laughs> it's, it's been right there the whole yeah, time. Yeah, that was good. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.